this is our last uh, last attempt at styling this form, and I want to show you I want to show you another way to do it. So in the last video, we took the original form and uh, we turned it into what you see on the left here, and tried to make it more usable. Um, you know, gave it some things like adding these borders, making it so when you hover over your buttons they change color, um, made things bigger, change the fonts, etc. And, you know, our style sheet isn't complicated, but there's a lot of different things that we had to do in here to make this work, um, manually styling this ourselves. So another approach you can take is you can use pre-existing frameworks. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use one today. There's lots of them, but this is probably one of the most popular ones, and it's called Bootstrap. And I just want to show you how these things work. So the concept with something like Bootstrap is you, I'm going to go to their get started guide here. What you do is you include their CSS style sheet. So instead of us writing our own CSS, we're going to use their CSS style sheet. And also they have a little bit of JavaScript that we can include. And if we do that, then instead of us writing our own manual uh, tags like this, or all the rules rather, what we're going to do is we're going to use their classes. So it's going to become less of a CSS job and more something that we have to do inside of our HTML. Okay, so just to give you a sense of how this works, let's start converting my document over to use um, Bootstrap. Bootstrap CSS styling. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to get rid of my style sheet. So I don't want my style sheet. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the style sheet from Bootstrap. So I'll put that in here. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy their JavaScript files that I need to include. And I'm going to throw that at the bottom of my, whoops, I guess I didn't copy that. Copy, paste. And I'm going to put these down at the bottom of my page like so. So I'll go back to my form and I'm going to save this. And okay, here's what it looks like so far. So you can see that the way that Bootstrap works is already it's changed the fonts, already it's done a few things like changed some some sizes, but it doesn't it doesn't have the right layout yet. So we still have to do a bunch of work to make this make this possible. So I'm not going to go through absolutely everything that you need to do, but I am going to take you through a bunch of the ways of using this and just show you how to look things up. So there's one last thing that I'm going to do, and it's what we've talked about before. Because I'm going to focus on making this uh, work on mobile, I'm going to specify the, how my viewport uh, width and scaling is going to work here. So I'm going to put that in as well. So they have a nice little starter template. If you're trying to get started with this, um, they give you an example of how you should set up your set up your page and then you can go and start working on it. And they explain what all of this stuff means and it's really good. So save that. I'm going to go here and I think what I'll do is just to encourage us when you're doing responsive design, I'm going to I'm going to take my browser and I'm going to flip it into responsive mode. So I'm going to tell it I want it to, let's just make enough room for this. I want to have it so that it works as if it's on, in this case, let's say an iPhone 6. Okay. Um, you can also change the width yourself. You can just, it's responsive, so you can move it around and see what it would look like at different sizes. But it's kind of nice when you're testing for certain devices. What does it look like in portrait mode? What does it look like in landscape mode, etc.? Okay. All right, so let's, let's dive into this. So the way that this thing works is you have a bunch of classes for doing various kinds of layout things like we were doing with Flexbox and Grid, and I'll show you an example of this uh, here in a second. And you also have a bunch of pre-made components. So there's all sorts of things in here like buttons that we're going to need, um, cards if you're building, you know, this is like if you think about your store and needing to be able to build things in your store, they've done stuff like that, or a carousel, um, being able to have different images show up. Um, but they have really good components for building forms. So I'm going to use their forms uh, to be able to do this. Uh, so I'm going to go back and forth between forms and layout and so on. So the first problem that I want to solve is you can see that everything is too tight. Everything is right to the edge of the screen, and that's not what I want. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of their containers. <clears throat> so what they have, if you go and have a look at the layout section, they have a default container class and it's responsive. And what that means is that at different sizes, it'll do what you want. So I'm going to, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a div and I'm going to say class equals container. And um, I'm going to put this down at the bottom. I'm going to wrap everything up in this. Like so, and I'll save that. And now you can see what's happened is it's given me a little bit of extra space automatically. So it's in this container and it'll work on, at different sizes. So if I, if I do this on, let's say an iPad, you can see that it'll work on an iPad. And basically the way that these, if I do it on my desktop, it'll work on my desktop. So what it'll do is it'll try and do the right thing at all different sizes. And it won't go too wide. You notice that it's already doing some of the stuff that we did manually where we made it so that the left and right margin uh, was automatically done for us. But on a mobile device, it goes, it's gonna go tighter. So on an iPhone, it's gonna make sure that things fit like so. So that's a nice improvement already. Mm. Okay, so let's get into this. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to go and have a look at their uh, components. And I'm interested to begin with, I want to look at their forms. So I'll let you read through this in more detail, but essentially what they say is that for input forms, text areas, and so on, what you do is you tell it that this is an input a form input control by saying that it uses the form control class. So what I can do is for all of my input controls, I can say class equals form control like so. So let's do that on all of these. Uh, let's go down and do it to everyone. Here, here, here <clears throat> on my <clears throat> on my text area on um, I'll come back to the file input and I'll come back to the button so let's save this and take a look at this okay that looks nice so already you can see that they've done something very similar to what we did they've increased the font size they've done the padding They've put the, the border around the edge. They've got a nice border radius effect going on. So this is good. They've already they've done a lot of a lot of um, a lot of things for us so that we're not going to have to do them. All right, so let's go and make make some more changes. So I need to deal with some other things. Um, I need to deal with a file input control. So it says, if you have a file input control, instead of using the form control class, use the form control file class. So I'm going to do that. So on my file input control, I'm going to say class equals form control file. And I'll save that and it will style this for me, which is good. Um, okay, so let's see what else we need to do here in order to get this to work the way that we would expect. So one thing that's broken in here is my data list doesn't work. So one of the downsides of using somebody else's uh, code instead of your own is that it doesn't always support everything that you want to use. So we had this nice data list and I can't really use it here because Bootstrap doesn't support it. But let's just see, I think that they do support selects. So you can see that they they support this style of having a select where there, it's a drop down. And the way you do it is like this, select. Um, so we could convert this into a select and let's set this up. So feedback problem class is equal to form control. 
name, this is all good. We don't have a list anymore. And I'm not going to do a placeholder anymore. I no longer am going to use a data list. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to change this to select. And I think they want this, they want it to look like this. So let's just modify our, modify the style of our code slightly. Whoops. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. And get rid of that. And let's do, it's faster to just type it myself like so. Okay, that looks good. And let's say that we wanna have, uh, let's, let's save this and see how it looks before we do anything else. Okay, good, so now I have a drop down. And I have all my options here. So I've lost a little bit of functionality because the user can't type something. Um, so that's not perfect, but, um, but not terrible. Okay, so we have, we have that. Um, let's, let's work on these buttons down at the bottom. So we need to, we need to fix up how, how these buttons work. So I'm gonna use bootstraps buttons and what they have is they have a bunch of different classes and ways of using buttons and you can have your buttons be outlined you can have them be large or small um, there's tons of different things you can do with their different classes on here but let's say that i like the primary and secondary buttons that are here so you can see that they've got them here and the way that you do it is you say this is a this is a button and also which button type you want to use button primary or button secondary so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say class equals BTN. And for my submit button, I'm gonna say that this is BTN primary. And for my reset button, it's the uh, less likely button to be chosen. So I'm gonna say class equals BTN, BTN secondary. Like so, and I'm gonna save that and let's take a look. Okay, good, so now I've got two buttons and they are down here on the left. I'd like to bump them over to the right. So in the past, what we did was we, um, we, we said we wanted to align these to the right. How can we do this in Bootstrap? So Bootstrap has a bunch of utilities for doing various kinds of things. So adding borders, doing icons, like if you wanna put an icon on something, um, but they also have, we can use Flexbox. So if we wanted to, because we've been working with Flexbox, we could use uh, Flexbox the, like they're doing. Like for example, what we wanna end up with is this right here. I wanna have a div and I wanna have, a, I wanna have two things inside the div and I want it to be laid out using Flex so, and I want the flex, I want it to start from the, I want it to basically be reversed. I want it to start from the right and go to the left instead of from the left and go to the right. So instead of saying flex row, I could say flex row reverse. So let's try this. If I were to go and say that uh, the class is, I want to flex this and I want to flex it in row reverse Let's have a look at this. That looks pretty good. Now these are too tight, too tight to each other. Uh, what I really want to do is I want to increase, like let's have a look here. I really want to, um, like I sort of want to set the margin on the right to be like two pixels or three pixels, something like that. So if I wanted to do that here, you can do that in Bootstrap. Bootstrap lets you work with things like padding and um, they have all these utility classes that are already that are already um, created. I don't know if I can find it quickly for you. Well, let me just see if I can find it here. So margin, in utilities, margin and padding, yeah. 
So what you do is you would say, I want to do margin on the right of three or whatever it is. So let's say that I want to do exactly that. Let's say I want to do um, margin on the right of three. Wrong one. Let's put it on this one here. There we go. Margin on the right of three. And you could decide, is that too much or not enough or whatever. Um, we could put margin on the top of five here if we wanted to bump this down. That's too much. Two, like so, right? If you wanted to put a little bit of space in here, you could do the same thing with um, your text area. If you didn't like that, you could say that you want to have margin on the top of two and you could push this down or that's probably not enough. Three. Yeah, push that down a little bit more. So what I'm doing is I'm instead of having to go into CSS and do all of this stuff manually, I'm taking advantage of the fact that Bootstrap has already defined all of these classes for me. And what's nice about them is they work for all different sizes. So as I expand this, you can see that it's 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 using different breakpoints. So depending on, like you see how it jumps there? So if I'm on a phone, it does one thing. If I'm on a tablet, it does another thing. If I'm on a really, uh, if I'm on a computer and I have tons and tons of space, it's gonna do something else. Like it's gonna expand to try and do the right thing at every, at every size. And I don't have to worry about um, making it work at all the different sizes. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rely on the fact that it's going to, it's gonna do this for me. So working with something like Bootstrap, my experience with it is you need to spend a bunch of time looking through all of the different things you can do in their examples. So they'll have lots of examples. They'll show you different ways of working with form controls and um, you know how to style things, what the different possibilities are. And you'll just have to experiment with it. And it's all going to come down to defining these different classes to make uh, to make it look the way that you want to do it. So I would encourage you try making some of your forms and, and other HTML too using something like Bootstrap. You don't have to you don't have to use all of Bootstrap to work with everything. Like you could do a mix. So you could decide you're going to use some of your own styles and you're going to use some of Bootstrap so styles and you're going to you're going to take advantage of both so that you don't have to solve all of these problems on your own. But there might be some of them that Bootstrap doesn't do the way you want it to and you want to leverage some other uh, CSS that you have. Or you might want to combine multiple CSS libraries to make this so that it works. So I want to wrap up this. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I haven't talked about in the Bootstrap stuff that we should cover. I think that's I think that's a pretty good first attempt with Bootstrap. So I'll pause there and I'll let you experiment at rebuilding these forms in using different ways this week when you're when you're going through the notes and um, working with CSS on them.